You know, I was thinking about the other day. Yeah. And the only reason why I bring you on this podcast mm-hmm. is so we could talk about this shit. <laughs> this is about your poor life choices. <laughs> And that one woman that you should have kept in your life. <laughs> oh my god, Doc! I have never. Oh my god, we're gonna have, go there. We're gonna go there. We have, I have never been so disappointed in somebody's life choices until I met you. For, for me, honestly, when people do things that I don't agree with, normally I don't care. Yeah, just because like it's their life, it's your life. You do whatever you want with it. But you made the biggest mistake of your life. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I think I made a good decision. Oh, yeah, because it's, you know, morally it makes sense. <laughs> Financially, it doesn't. All right, so a little bit of background information here. Who he's referring to was um, somebody that I dated who was, um, let's just say she came from a very wealthy background, right? And um, Let's just say. Let's just say. She could have been the princess of Persia. <laughs> She could have fed me and you, taking care of my whole family. (laughs) Um, And it wouldn't have dented anything in her fucking bank account. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But long story short, basically, it got to the point where she kind of gave me like an uh, ultimatum of like, you know, three year plan of, okay, within the next year, I want to be married within two years. Oh, no, no, no. Within one year, she wants to be engaged. Within two, she wants to be married. And within three, she wants to have kids. Wait, how long were you guys together before this ultimatum came around, though? Um, I don't know, like a year and a half or so, or I don't know, two years. Stupid. I, I wasn't. <laughs> she gave I you enough time. I wasn't really keeping track. No, but <clears throat> like for me is I don't appreciate when somebody imposes their will on me like that because it was just more of a situation of now, okay. I told her, I said, I can't make any promises because even if I do, I don't know what's going to happen from now until, you know, next month, next year, two years from now. All I can say is I can say if we keep going down the path that we're going down, then that's what it'll probably lead to. But but she wanted uh, definites. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I want you to tell me that this is what's going to happen. And I'm like, I can't tell you that. Nobody can tell you that. Who the fuck knows what the future holds for us? So right? you weren't you weren't sure that that was the woman that you wanted to marry, even after you found out that she was a crazy rich Asian, <laughs> dude. Basically, that's the story. She was a, <laughs> she was a crazy. She that's what she, that's where she's from. Uh, yeah, I mean, but but the thing is, is like you know, I think initially when we first started dating, she was trying to not make it so obvious she's trying to kind of hide i, I would have never known like yeah, i absolutely right. she, she was super like down to earth yeah very sweet yeah yeah and like to me when i met her the the, the couple of times i would have yeah. never thought that she came from money because number one she didn't flaunt it right she didn't behave as somebody who came from money so like yeah when i met her i thought she was just some average girl that just worked an average yeah, job very yeah. sweet yeah i mean i i really thought the same thing in in, in the sense of like i didn't know she came from that type of money um, and I feel like she kind of had her experiences with that where people would try to use her or, or like get to, what are you be- saying, bro? Why are you looking at me and saying that shit? I would have never, I would have never you done brought that. Up this I would have, I would have, I would have never this done is, that. This is your fantasy that we're talking about through me, right? To be honest with you, I don't even remember her name. <laughs> Oh, shit. I don't. I don't it's remember like, her name. I don't care about her name. I just, but. <laughs> I just remember. I just. I just saw her as fucking. Uh, what do you call? It? I call her Lotto. Lotto. <laughs> I'm it's kidding. Your, it's your winning Lotto ticket. That I you found got. out after the fact, though. By the way, yeah. I found this out after the fact. I had no clue. <laughs> And then he said, "This is the worst decision that I've ever made in my life." <laughs> Stupid. Just dumb. No, but I mean, here's here's the thing, man. Is um, I, I told you about this too. Is like when she had brought up that conversation is when we were preparing the lookbook shoot for Secret Society. That mm-hmm. was, so a lot of shit was going on. And, you know, we, we had a pretty ambitious uh, project with that. So yeah. in order to get everything organized and make sure that everything was going to be what we were hoping uh, we could make, there was a lot of time and energy that went into that. But for her, even knowing that that wasn't the best time to talk about it, and she even prefaced it by saying that, like saying, yeah, I know this is not the best time to bring this up to you, but, and then blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <sighs> fucking hell. <laughs> this is something, this is something else I got to deal with. She could have solved all of our problems. <laughs> she could have solved. We were struggling so bad on the money aspect. 
<laughs> and I believe true. she even offered. Yeah, she did to help financially right. support it. And, and she, let me, no, no, hold on a second. This is oh, what yeah. she said that got me the most. Mm. This is where I started to hate you as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "You could take whatever, and you don't even have to pay me back." And I said, wow, what a saint. And you said, I'm leaving you. <laughs> it didn't I, happen in that sequence, you man. You are a bad person. No, no. I mean, here's the thing, man. It's just, you know, as as a man, and as, as a principled man, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I. there was no way that I was even willing to entertain that idea or that offer. It was just more for me. Like, for me, it was just like, I appreciate the, the moral support mm -hmm. and, and the thought that you have about that, that you would even be willing to offer that. But I made that very clear. It's like, there's no way that I'm taking your money, you know, for any reason. And all I really need is for you to be in my corner and just give me the moral support. Damn, dude, you sound like a fruity ass movie. <laughs> what, a, what a great choice would have been. Okay, I want it in cold, hard cash. Cold, hard cash. <laughs> and I want briefcase. you to support... My really good friend, David, because he stopped doing YouTube for two years and he still has the same spending habits. And then he's going to live with us. <laughs> he's going to live with us. And all he has to do is clean toilets and make food. That's it. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, But was I, the ultimatum the only reason why you didn't want to be with her? Just because. No, because like that, that was kind of like, I think it showed me a different shade of her that mm. I hadn't previously seen. And, and that was like her kind of, and this is this is how I feel. Maybe she felt differently about it, but I just felt that she was kind of saying what mattered to me was not as significant as what's important to her right now, you know? Because the thing is, she could have waited like literally a couple of weeks, a month, whatever, to have that conversation. Once we got finished with it, at least, then she knows, okay, that's off my chest, that's off my mind. Now we can have this conversation, which would I what I felt would have been more reasonable. But in the thick of it, when I was because because mm. look at this too, man. You know that when I, I I quit my job to start this shit, right? Yeah. And then so I was living off my savings, and it was obviously getting pretty tough, right? Yeah. And so I was trying to really conserve my money, not go out, be indoors all day, just fucking working on this shit, talking with the factories, whatever, and then it really started to take a toll on me. And then on top of that, we had the lookbook shoot. So, and, and you know, that, that shit was no easy task either, man. There were so many moving parts to that. So like, she knew all of this was going on because we would talk, obviously, you know, we're, we're together for that long. But still, her desire and her needs pretty much outweighed all of that. And it, I almost took it as an indirect way of her telling me like, yeah, I know that's important to you, but it really doesn't matter because this matters more right now, you mm -hmm. know? Because what difference would it have made if we had that conversation two weeks, a month, two months even after the fact, right? Because mm -hmm. we were already together for a while at that point. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I have my thoughts and, and my feelings about it and she might disagree with what I'm saying right now, uh, but it really doesn't matter. I feel like what happened happened for a reason and yeah. I have no regrets about it, you know? I have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many regrets. You, you were thinking about the life of private jets and... <laughs> I miss her. I miss her so much. I miss you so much, T Tiffany. <laughs> That's not her name. Yeah, that isn't. What's, wait, wait, what did her name start with? Um, S. Ah, uh, Stephanie. <laughs> no? I, I, I won't say. I won't say. Okay, we know. can't say her name. Yeah, yeah. Just for just for privacy reasons, but um. fucking hell. <laughs> well, I only met her a couple of times, <laughs> so that's. I know you're talking about like <laughs> you knew this girl inside out, like, and she had a heart of gold, and she was this. Sweet she did. Girl. She was with you, you trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> she had a great heart of gold, dude. Oh man, I miss her so much, dude. I remember the times where she and I just sat across the table, didn't talk. <laughs> She was great, dude. And she would say, hey. And I'd be like, hey. And then we'd be like, what's up? No, but I man, mean, I, I just... Memories. I don't know, man. I feel like everybody has their own agendas and priorities in life. Yeah. And at that point, for me, 
it was about the brand. I'm not going to say that she didn't matter to me in my she life. She was going to give us money for the brand. You didn't care enough about the brand. <laughs> I know, man. I, <laughs> hey, you know, I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Dude, I, I'm not going to say this on the podcast, but I, I, I got pretty kind of fed up with, with that, um, her like offering me. You yeah, know? I, I know what that feels like, though, just because um, – I'm, I'm pretty sure in her case, she wasn't thinking like, oh, like I need – in her, she was pro- she was trying to be helpful. Mm-hmm. But there's something about being able to do stuff on your own with your own will and your own power and your own money. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't feel the same. And it almost feels like a handout. You don't want a fucking handout. No, exactly, man. Exactly. I mean that's – and I wasn't raised like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you know, our family didn't – we weren't rich. I mean, yeah. we were fucking poor, so I had to work for everything that I wanted in life. Yeah. And that's just the way I'm built, you know? And so – I threw that all away. <laughs> <laughs> he said, fuck this. <laughs> I, said, fuck. I was like – I just – I was like, I remember Edris Grill had really big titties. <laughs> and I could have – and I could have lived in those. Oh, my God. I would have just – I would have just – I would have just fucking held my tongue and just rested in those balloons. <laughs> Oh shit! And you could have floated away to happiness. <laughs> a rich man, <laughs> <laughs> a very rich man who didn't have to do anything but nah, love a woman. You know what the thing is though? It's like um, she would talk to my friends, like because she, in her mind, could not figure out why I was so reluctant to give that type of commitment that she wanted. Mm. So she would go to my friends. And like kind of, and you know that she knows if she talks to them about it, that they're going to talk to me about it. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. That's default. Exactly. So she would kind of go to them and be like, yeah, I don't understand why, you know, Ed doesn't want to commit like that because, you know, we, we get along and, you know, like I have money. And then like, if we get married, then that, you know, that would also be his, like what's mine is his. But I think... From the very beginning, I made it so clear, like, I don't give a fuck about how much money you have. Yeah. You know? It seems like for her, she's probably used to that type of treatment. And it's kind of interesting in her case where she doesn't want to be judged or develop relationships for that, but for that's her trump card. Right. So it, it, that's exact. Dude, that's the thing, man. At the end of it, I felt like she was almost hang that shit over my head. It's like, why wouldn't you want to be with yeah. me? Like, I have yeah, money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was talking to the wrong person. Yeah, dude. and that, that that I got fucking insulted by that. Yeah. I'm like, dude. She said that to me. <laughs> You'd have been like, let me think about it. Hell yeah. <laughs> she was like, What's, right when she said this, yeah. she would have been like, listen, I don't get it. Yeah. What's mine would be yours. Well, why didn't you say it in the first place, bitch? <laughs> then, yeah, I would have said yes a long I time do, ago. Do, then. do I buy the engagement or do you buy your own? <laughs> yeah. And then you give it to me. Yeah, exactly. And then I surprise you with something you already know that I have. Well, how, how is this going to work? Because I can't then, buy you something really and big. Then, and then you buy the house, right? And then the yeah. car. And then and uh, then do you go to work? And then I put a ribbon on the house as if you didn't know. And I cut it saying it's happy birthday. Because I don't know how this relationship works out, but I'm willing to figure it out. I'm making sacrifices. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to be a stay-at-home dad. Don't you worry about it. I'm going to take care of the kids. <laughs> I'll take care of the fucking kids. I'll get a six-pack. I don't give a fuck. Hey, you know what, man? Like, to each their own. I know some people out there can live like that. I can't. Like, if I don't have that type of, like, drive and, and ambition in my life, I just would feel like I'm... It's, it's just hard to to end up being with somebody that you just don't click with in, in that sense yeah, either. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, man, we always talk about this shit too. You can't leave with the money that you have on this earth anyway. So exactly. what does it fucking matter? Exactly. And for me, it's like, what matters more is about really doing and trying to accomplish something that's meaningful to me. And like I was saying at that time and place, and especially in our relationship, I would have hoped and even assumed that she would understand how important it was to me, especially because she even made an offer, remember, about moving to her home country. That's right. Yeah. The biggest offer you yeah. denied. Yeah, and I said, if you know me, you already know what my answer to that is. Because we just started the clothing brand too at that point. Yeah. Well, no, no, it, it was right before that. It was, oh. or no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think it was just, yeah, after we launched it. Yeah. I think I think that's what it was. I don't know. The timeline's a little it, it, hazy for me. The, the time, well, the point of that was that during that time, like she should have known like, yo, I just started something that I'm very passionate about. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to leave it. Exactly. So, so and, what are and, you thinking? And, and to know the sacrifices that I made for it. You yeah, know what I mean? bring David with me or... <laughs> Like, did she even did she even offer that and put it on the table? It's like, so you're going to get Dave a place too, right? Like, Yeah, yeah what the fuck? Like, I, I can come. Mariel speaks uh, Taiwanese Mandarin. Like, she needs a place. 
This is this is all about you and the, the boat that you missed. I know, dude. Yo, that's a great film. It's called The Boat That I Missed. The boat that I it's missed. called The Boat That You Missed. And it's not even about the main character. It's about the guy just on the side like, what's wrong with him, dude? Yeah. Um, but like I said, I man. I should have gotten to know I, it better, dude. I fucked, up. <laughs> I fucked up, dude. I fucked up. This was it. Let me get her number, bro. <laughs> he yeah. said, I said, let me, let me give her a call, man. I actually did ask her for his, her number. And this fool didn't have it anymore because he yeah. deleted it like a jackass. Yeah. Poor choices. No, I mean, it's just like, you know, once once I'm done, it's done. Like, <sighs> there's there's no... Because here's the thing, man, yeah. and, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, is like when a relationship ends, right, especially if you guys didn't start as friends, trying to kind of now go backwards into a friend zone and trying to find that and establish that and define that. No, my I saw your vagina. We can't go back. <laughs> That's, that's, I, I saw your vagina. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly. gonna happen. It's it's like the inevitable accelerating the inevitable. Just fast forwarding it. You know, like let's skip all that fucking bullshit and just boom. It's yeah. gonna be done anyway. Yeah. You, I I feel a lot of people don't understand that though. Yeah. A lot of people say, well, it's kind of heartless for you to cut ties with somebody that you developed a relationship over for for many years or whatever months and stuff. Right. But for me is. How I see it is this. If I died tomorrow, you would still move on. Right, right, right. All right? You would you would end up with somebody else. Yeah. You'll have kids, and you'll eventually forget about me. You're right. And so whether I choose to be a part of your life or not, your life will still be better without me. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. Ultimately, 